Um, okay, we're looking at question three now from the January 2010 BY1 paper. Uh, this is a question on uh, biosensors, really, uh, which, uh, you know, uses immobilized enzymes. Okay, uh, this biosensor here is, uh, is a digital one, okay, often known as a voltage output uh, biosensor. Uh, basically, you get a, a digital reading um, produced uh, by the device. Okay, so if we just look at the, the diagram that the examiner has drawn there, okay, um, it, it looks similar to the one that I've produced in my notes, but what you've got to realise is there's lots of ways of representing a biosensor, but every biosensor has the same uh, key features within it. Uh, so if we just go through the features, uh, you've got the partially permeable membrane, very important, uh, this is the region where the enzyme is immobilized. Now, in this question, they're actually immobilizing urease uh, because that enzyme can actually uh, detect um, urea. Okay. Um, the product then of the immobilized urease is ammonium ions. Okay, so that's the product there. Um, the next part of the uh, biosensor is the transducer. Okay, that's an important part of the. Uh, biosensor. You've got an amplifier there and then the uh, display. All right. Uh, so you need to know the functions of each of those uh, components of the um, biosensor. Right, so let's have uh, a look at the uh, first question then. A1, name one method that could be used to immobilize urease. Uh, the best answer to put really, simple, straightforward enough, is to say uh, immobilize the urease in alginate beads um, or maybe a gel membrane. Okay, there we go. So I've said there, uh, use alginate beads. Uh, A2 then, state three advantages of using immobilized enzymes. Now, uh, you'll be doing yourself a great favor if you can commit to memory uh, at least five advantages, I would say, of using immobilized enzymes. There are other advantages, uh, more than five, uh, but whenever you get a question on immobilized enzymes, they will want to know some advantages, okay? Um, so we can say that they uh, can withstand higher temperatures, of course. Uh, we can say that they're cheaper, okay, because they can be reused. Um, the uh, enzyme can withstand a range of pHs, okay? Uh, so there's a whole range of uh, advantages uh, that you can state in that question. Okay, so I've put uh, a few answers in there. I've said that they are cheaper because they can be reused. Uh, they can withstand higher temperatures, so are more stable. Uh, more than one enzyme can be used at a time, and the immobilized enzymes uh, are easily removed or added, so uh, the reaction rate can be controlled. Okay, um, so that should, uh, should get you three marks there. Um, if we're moving on then, uh, part B1, describe the function of the partially permeable membrane in this biosensor. This question always comes up when there's a question on biosensors. It's always worth two marks. So they're after two key uh, features of the partially permeable membrane. And it's straightforward enough. It's there to allow, uh, in this instance, the... Um, uh, the urea uh, to pass through the uh, partially permeable membrane. Uh, the urea is the substrate of the urease uh, enzyme. Okay, um, so that'll get you one mark. Uh, the other mark then is to state that any other molecules, substances that are present uh, in the blood or the urine are prevented from entering into the biosensor. Okay, so it very much uh, just allows small molecules in, in particular, the molecule that wants to be uh, detected. Okay, so I've typed that, mess, uh, that answer in now. It just allows the urea to pass through and prevents the passage of other larger substances like uh, blood cells. Okay, uh, so always remember to, to quote those, uh, those two facts there. Okay, uh, and just remember, I've used the term urea there because this question is about the detection of urea. 
okay if the question was talking about the detection of glucose then I would obviously substitute the urea for the glucose okay so you have to make sure your answer is specific to the question uh, that we are actually doing okay uh, the next part then is with reference to the diagram describe the role uh, of the transducer all right now again um, in most questions on biosensors you're asked about the function of the transducer and it always has two marks associated with it so that means that there are two uh, functions that you need uh, to quote uh, the first one is that the transducer actually absorbs the products from the enzyme catalyzed uh, catalyzed reaction so in this case the uh, urease converts urea into ammonium ions all right so the transducer will absorb the ammonium ions okay that'll get you one mark and uh, once it does that it then converts these ammonium ions into an electrical uh, signal okay um, and that's that's the the functions there of the transducer okay so uh, I've uh, typed the uh, the answer in there okay moving on uh, if the biosensor was used to test two blood samples explain why the temperature of the two samples should remain uh, or should be the same uh, now this is um, a question really that's relating to the practical aspects of using enzymes okay now uh, temperature of course can affect how enzymes work okay a higher temperature can actually increase the rate of a uh, enzyme catalyzed reaction all right uh, so it's very much a, a practical uh, based question um, so basically the temperature has to remain the same because if it isn't then the rate of the enzyme catalyzed reaction can be different with the two blood samples all right um, if the rate of reaction is different it means that you're going to get different amounts of ammonium ions being produced okay um, if that happens then basically you don't really have a fair uh, test or a fair experiment going on because you haven't kept uh, your conditions the same uh, temperature there would be an example of a, of a control variable all right if you've uh, if you've started your uh, by3 uh, practical yet you should know what a control variable is it's something that has to remain constant uh, to ensure that you get uh, accurate results okay um, so that's the answer to uh, part two then you've got to keep the temperature constant because it can affect the enzyme activity okay that can subsequent subsequently affect the amount of ammonium ions produced and it can then create different uh, results uh, there's the uh, there's the answer now uh, an increase in temperature can increase the activity of the enzyme this can produce more ammonium ions and so produce a greater electrical current giving different readings for the concentration of urea okay uh, so that should get you uh, the two marks uh, lastly then name a medical condition which a biosensor can detect um, okay the one that uh, you should remember of course is uh, diabetes uh, that completes uh, question three then if we uh, just have a quick look at uh, the mark scheme then okay for question three uh, there we've got the alternate beads for the uh, uh, immobilization all right part two about the uh, advantages of immobilized enzymes there they are again that's not a complete list of advantages okay but that's all that uh, the examiner has placed in the mark scheme okay uh, part B then the function of the um, partially permeable membrane all right there it is allows urea to pass through prevents the passage of any other molecules uh, function of the transducer of course absorbs ammonium ions and converts into electrical signals and uh, part C then about um, the differences in temperature okay which uh, I think I've already mentioned all of those and lastly uh, the condition detected by biosensors diabetes 
Okay, that's the end of question uh, three.